Hello everyone and welcome to Fan Tech Corner. In this video, let's take a look at the G-Pon terminal from TP-Link, the Exit 000G3. So this is a new G-Pon terminal that had been introduced by TP-Link around end of 2022. So this is the device and it's very small. You can see the size of this module is more or less the same size with the NanoPi R6S. Alright. So at the front side, we have some LDD indicator. This one indicate power. Next, we have the point indicator. And this one is LOS or loss of service. And the last one is the LAN indicator. All right. So at the back, we have the power. And please know that this power connector is 9 volt instead of 12 volt. So make sure you use the correct power adapter just in case you are looking for some kind of replacement. After that, we have the reset button. So this one will reset all of the setting to factory. And then we have a LAN port. This one is a gigabit LAN port. And the last one will be the fiber port. So this one is SCAPC connector. All right, so very simple. And at the back, we have like some of the serial number as well at the Mac as well as the device. So this one usually will be used to register the device on the OLT if some ISP are using this kind of authentication. So on the rear side, we have some space for air ventilation purposes. All right, so that is it. very small and lightweight. So now I'm going to connect the fiber cable to this uh, g ONT and then we are going to log into the web UI of this device. And let's see what do we have inside. So this is the fiber cable from my ISP and this one is a fast connector. It is an SCAPC connector. And now let's connect it to the G point. So you can see that right here we have uh, some things like this. Then it should be connected this way. Very good. Everything are in. And now we need to connect the power cable to this one and connect the NanoPi R6 add to this one if you know how to configure it with OpenWRT. However, if you are using this one with your computers and this is your first time using so you don't know what is OpenWRT, so we are going to configure this one with the PC first. All right, so this cable is from my PC and now I'm going to connect it to the g ONT, all right? And lastly, time for the power connector. And we can see that the device is in power on. So we have the LED blinking, like we have the power and we have the LAN activity. And shortly after this, we should be able to see the pawn LED light up. Let's wait for it. All right, so you can see that the LOS LDD is blinking, which means we have some issue with the pawn connection. But let's wait for a few seconds. And we can see that the pawn LDD is now up and running, which means the fiber optic connection is good. So let's go back to the computers and we're going to do something there. So now let's go to the network interfaces and let's modify something on the connection. The TP-Link Access 000G3 is running the web UI on 192.168.1.1. So in order to access the web UI, we need to set the IPv4 of our computer to something similar. So I'm going to put it 192.168.1.5 for example, and that's it. Okay, and now let's open the terminal and let's try to ping the return. And very good, we have the response. Now let's go to 192.168.1.1 and we should be able to reach the Gpon XFU web interface. So by default, the username is admin and the password is admin. All right, so this is an overview of the web UI and on the status page, we have the system status. So the ONU ties is one port gigabit G-Point terminals and right here 
we have the firmware version or the build version and this one right here is the hardware version so let's say your ISP provided you this G.0.0 and you want to replace this one with an XRP module then the firmware version and the hardware version may be something that you need to take a look at all right and then on the LAN, we have the LAN status is disconnected, but I can see that the LAN mode is 1000 Mbps, so I assume that it is working in bridge mode and this status is not working at all. And next, we have the status for the pond, and right here we can see the asset mode is G pond. So I tried to take a look at the data sheet of this module, and I cannot find if it supports E pond or not. But right now we only have G pond and we can see that the authentication status is 05 and this is the temperatures of the G pond module or the laser module and this is just my assumption and it is around 52 degrees Celsius. The voltage and TX as well as RX power. All right. And at the end we have the statistics for all types packets for Pond for OMCI and LAN. All right, so let's go to the network settings, and right here we have some configuration for Pond. So we can override the new G Pond password, and I believe this one should be the P L O A M password. And the next one is a G Pond serial number. So this one you can override the serial number, and you can see that they noted that. It must be 16 hexademical numbers. All right. And next on the VLAN settings, we have some types of VLAN mode. We have control by OLT, VLAN tag mode, transparent mode, remote downstream VLAN IDs, or, da or downstream transparent mode. All right. So if you select control by OLT, then whatever VLAN sent from the OLT will be received by your ONT or else you can select the VLAN tag mode and you can put your own VLAN there. So some ISP also put some VLAN priority on the VLAN so you can also change from here. And transparent mode which means there is no controls on the VLAN and whatever VLAN is running on your OLT is will be received on your ONT side. So right now I just leave it at control by OLT and right here you can actually perform a VLAN scan so the ONT will search for all of the VLAN that is sent by the OLT and it will tell you what kind of VLAN or what kind of mode that you need to set so right here the ONT detects that the ISP is running the PPOE service on a transparent mode VLAN therefore I can select the VLAN to transparent mode right here and configure the VLAN as well as configure the PPOE connection. So on the LAN settings, we can change the LAN IPv4 address as well as the subnet and we can turn on or off the GSCP server. And lastly, on the management tab, we have the user management where you can change the username or actually you can only change the password for admin and user account. On the firmware upgrade, we can upgrade to the new uh, release of course and on the Factory d file, we can erase all kind of VLAN as well as the pawn configuration and the last one is a reboot function. So we can see that the configurations um, or the web UI of this XZ000G trees is very simple. Alright, so this is a very simple and cheap ONT that has been released just in 2022 and uh, the first quarter of 2023 so this is right now the, the end of uh, February and you can see that the support and the resources for this ONT on the internet is uh, still in the beginning state so right now we can only change the GPON password and GPON serial number therefore if you ask me if this ONT is supported by your ISP or not I have no answer for that uh, but I can only tell you that we can only change the G-Point password and serial number. So that's all I know. Alright, so now we already have uh, G-Point ONU in 05 status. And the next step is we'll be connecting this one to your router. It can be um, 
at the router let's say you can use a Xiaomi or TP-Link or OpenWRT to configure the internet and I already do some of the video so I will put them on the video description and if you want to see how to do that then you can check them out all right before ending the video let's do a poll so I want to open or tear down this ONT and see what is the component inside and if my command receive more than 10 likes then I will go ahead and tear this one down and let's see what is inside and if not then I will just leave it for now so that is all for this video thanks for watching and see you all in the next one